Hey, greetings from Las Vegas and welcome to week nine of the pro football season. We're already halfway through this thing, which means it's time for midterm grades. See which team and which one of us is getting an F. Uh oh, beat the odds starts right now. From our Las Vegas studios, this is Beat the Odds, sponsored by Superbook Westgate Las Vegas. And here we go. Welcome inside our Las Vegas studio. I'm Dave Paul and I'm Mariah Janos. We've hit the halfway point of the pro football season somehow yeah. and like any midterm exam we have some teams acing the test and some who might need a little summer <laughs> school. So we're going to be handing out some beat the odds midterm grades from the A's. Yes to the F's. Oh boy. We'll also coming up on today's show Teddy will give us a betting tutorial fancy on how to handle all the backup quarterbacks playing right now and Jack won his best bet again so you know he's going to be extra extra today. That's definitely likely and I'll be talking about the good bad and ugly after the trade deadline this week and we talked to Brandon Marshall to hear how he thinks teams are doing midseason who's getting an A and who's getting a failing grade much like the rest of us. <laughs> All right Mariah well you definitely get an A for being an excellent host and just a great person as for the boys Teddy and Jack also A's professional great knowledge. However, Jack, <laughs> citizenship is an F. I was going to say because I, I couldn't get, last time I got like a C minus or something. So you ran out to a C. You know what, that is <laughs> really, I, I thought I was doing much better. And like a lot of these teams that have quarterback <laughs> issues, I think I've got one hand tied behind my back because my personality just doesn't come through like we want it to. Oh. But the best bets are winning, so that's good, right? No, we love your personality. <laughs> We're just giving you a hard time. So let's get the show started. Teddy, what do you want to talk about? We ought to talk a little recap of what happened this past week when we talk about some bad beats and this was a bad push a brutal push the g-men with a 99.9 .9 chance to win the ball game instead they decide not to go for it on fourth down kick the field goal the field goal misses leaving just enough time for the other new york team to drive down the field tie it and send it into overtime if you had the g-men plus three that was a tough tough push and of course the very worst beats in pro football tend to come with an onside kick recovery. That's what Arizona did last week to sneak in the number against Baltimore. Tough beat if you had Zona. And of course, a couple of shockers that we do want to talk about. Back from the dead, perhaps? Tennessee, New Orleans, Cincinnati, three teams that have all underachieved early. All three of them brought their A game last week and could be bet on moving forward. Yeah, Baltimore was one of my losses, my only loss actually on Sunday. That was a brutal one because they mm. typically don't get onsides. But by the way, if you're betting on that New York game, you get exactly what you pay for. <laughs> I mean, if you're putting a dime on that and not walking your dog, that's a problem. Just watching that game was a loss. Exactly. My, you know, my big shocker has been the amount of quarterbacks. I mean, this is the one thing where we kind of transition over into a fantasy as well because fantasy teams all having trouble with their quarterback. We thought Aaron Rodgers was maybe the end of this. It's just the beginning. We've had over 70% of the quarterbacks who started of the year have some sort of injury and that really makes it difficult on not only fantasy players but also guys trying to figure out how to adapt mm -hmm. to backup quarterbacks you can see the list it's an amazing list of all-star quarterbacks that have had injuries this year and having to adjust to that has been uh, one of the big challenges to be able to make money on Sundays when you see some of these backups come in do you guys because I know you guys are tracking the lines constantly do you instantly see the lines move or what typically happens there? Yeah, bigger the quarterback, the more it moves for sure. Sure. Well, the, the issue is much more not how good the quarterback is, but how big of a drop off it is from the starting quarterback to the backup. Mm -hmm. You see the biggest moves in cases like Minnesota where there's an enormous drop off yeah. between the starter. And yeah, the backup. there's a lot of ways to handle that. Sometimes you want the lines to move and create some value with the backup because the general public's moving it too much. Other times, yeah, there's a real concern when you go from starters to backup. Um, in the next segment, we're going to talk a little bit more about how to take advantage of some of these backup situations because yeah. there's so many. And real quick, either one of you guys jump in. Obviously, a lot of changes here in Las Vegas this week. Uh, entire <laughs> new staff. Uh, they're going with the rookie, Aiden O'Connell. How has that shifted the lines? How do you think that shifts perhaps the future of Las Vegas here? So the markets have moved surprisingly little on this announcement. The markets haven't gone crazy <laughs> with the news for Las Vegas, but a lot of that has to do with who they're playing this week. Right. Uh, there's not, New York. <laughs> yeah, there's and not I, a whole lot of big Also excitement a reflection of their starter to their backup. I mean, I, I, Garoppolo yeah. had not played well, so I mean, what are we getting with the backup? May not be that big of a drop-off. 
All right, we'll dive more into some of the games this week in a bit. Thank you, boys. Well, all these changes definitely keep Las Vegas sports books on their toes. Mariah is at the Superbook Westgate, Westgate Las Vegas with more. Thanks, Dave. I'm here with EVP of Superbook Operations, Jay Cornegay. Jay, we're already at the halfway point in the season, which is wild, but how did you guys do in week eight here at the book? Well, we had a couple more upsets. Denver came through for us. Cincinnati came through for us. So that makes three weeks in a row that the operators have really lived off all these upsets. Now, there are at least seven backup quarterbacks starting this weekend. That may change between now and Sunday. It might even go up. But how do those backups impact the lines? Well, they're all going to impact the line one way or another, but uh, it really depends on the quality of the, the, the backup. Um, you know, you have some big differences between a star. You might have an all pro you're going right to a, a rookie. You have other situations where you might have like Ritter or going back to Heineke. That's not really a big difference. So it always depends on the quality of the backup of how big that adjustment will be. And we have another international game this week, Kansas City and Miami and Frankfurt, Germany. How does that neutral site, neutral location have an impact on the lines? Well, it's going to be really interesting. Everybody's looking forward to this Miami-Kansas City game, and it just happens to be played across the, the planet. Uh, <laughs> but we're all looking forward to it, nevertheless. Uh, Kansas City, we had as high as three. It dropped down to one and a half now. But if it was played in Kansas City, you, we wouldn't be looking at one and a half. We'd be looking at maybe three and a half, maybe even four uh, in favor of Kansas City. All right, Jay, thank you so much. Dave, we'll send it back to you in studio. I guess at least it's on this planet. 30 years from now, we may be playing football on Mars or the moon. Uh, well, a couple days ago, we got an email from Teddy that said he would like to give a betting tutorial on the backup quarterbacks. All right, Professor, we're going to have that. Plus, Brandon Marshall handing out his midterm grade. See which team gets an A and which one gets an F. Yikes. It's all next. Before we go to break, in a historic pro debut, Tennessee's rookie quarterback Will Levis threw his first career touchdown pass to wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins. That made Levis the fourth quarterback ever to throw his first career touchdown pass to Hopkins. Who are the other three? The answer after the break. Beat the Odds is sponsored by Superbook Westgate Las Vegas. Welcome back. Before the break, we asked you, before Will Levis, who were the other three quarterbacks to throw their first career touchdown passes to DeAndre Hopkins? The answer, Case Keenum in 2013, and then Deshaun Watson and Tom Savage did it in 2017. Yeah, Mariah, that kid has biceps for days. Tell you what. Welcome back to Vegas, home of blackjack buffets and beat the odds. Scan that QR code. It will take you to our website, a great source for betting information, beattheoddstv.com. All right, time to bring back in our champ, Brandon Marshall. You uh, won your ring with Denver, Brandon, so you know what a title team looks like. You know what it takes. Mm -hmm. So we want to see your midterm grades right now, my friend. Okay. Let's start with the the letter A, who are the top team or teams in your mind so far? Well, speaking of title, you know, I'm going to have to go with Kansas City and Philadelphia. You know, those two teams look like they're poised to head back to the big game. Not much chinks in their, ar in their armor, so it's easy A for me for them. Okay, like that. Who are your B teams? Teams that are good, yeah. maybe needs just a little push to get over the top. You know, my B team has to be Miami. You know, Miami has an extremely potent offense, but their defense just isn't where it needs to be, right, mm -hmm. to get them over that hump. They can win a lot of games, but when it comes to the actual big game, you see they kind of take a step back, just like the game against Philadelphia. Gotcha. All right, C, you know, the, the very definition yeah. of average. Who do you got there? You know, it's funny. You might, it might shock you, but I'm going to put Dallas right here for the C team because, you know, to okay. me, they're front runners. When they, when they play a good team, they're below average. But when they play a, a mediocre to bad team, they look all world. So I'm going to give Dallas a C. And what kind of a push would it take for Dallas to move up into the A-B category in your mind? I mean, you know, Dak has to play big and big games, right? At yeah. the end of the day, their quarterback has to play big and big games. Now, they have a good defense. They get turnovers. But yeah. right now, I feel like that quarterback play isn't where it needs to be. Consistency. Absolutely. See, there we go. <laughs> All right. Uh, now we're getting kind of towards the dregs. Uh, D, you know, not totally hopeless, but yeah. needs a lot of help. Who would be your D team or teams? Uh, you have to go D for Denver. There we know? go. All right. <laughs> right now, Denver, you know, they are 
uh, you know, they, they beat Kansas City for the first time in 16 games, right? Yeah. In eight years, which yeah. is first, first, first of all, that's crazy. And they dominated they, that game. They, they that was not a fluke. Five turnovers, but at the end of the day, they need a lot of help. Uh, you know, I don't have much hope for them, but you know, that's why they get a D grade. They're not quite in the F, you know, scenario, yeah. but they have a D. Well, let's go there. There's a lot of bad teams this year. Yeah. Who would be your F category? Look, it's a bunch you can pick, but I'm going to have to pick Arizona. You know, Arizona, you know, they're one uh -huh. and seven, and, you know, they, they just traded away their quarterback, right? You know, Kyler Murray's coming back, but at the end of the day, I don't see them, you know, getting past four wins. They have a decision to make once mm -hmm. the draft comes to see what right. they're going to do at the quarterback position, but right now, Arizona is my F team. Brandon Marshall, you're always an A in our book. <laughs> Thank you, as always, for your insight. We appreciate you. All right. Um, there are backup quarterbacks starting all across the league this weekend. So, Jack, you have some numbers to help the betters out. Yeah, so we're trying to identify games where we can make some money with backup quarterbacks because we're not going to lay off. So we're going to keep going and play these. So how do we go about that? Well, how do we look at backups versus starters? I look at perception versus reality. Teams that had quarterbacks that maybe per were perceived being really good quarterbacks, and then when they get a backup in, letting the line move a lot because nobody wants to play a backup and then creating value with that backup spot. Teams like Chicago. Uh, Chicago, Justin Fields was with the least most profitable quarterback in the entire league uh, over the last year and a half. So him going out, really, I'm not losing any sleep over it. Whoever they have, they're not going to score a bunch of points. Their defense has been playing better, and they're playing a good opponent if you're going to play a backup. A team like New Orleans doesn't score a lot of points. 12 of the last 14 games have gone under. As I said, Justin Fields, the perception of how good he is or was, not really the reality of it. Also a team like Minnesota. Uh, the, Teddy's going to show you the other side of this, but I actually don't mind backups. Kirk Cousins has been a lot to them, but when they're playing teams like Atlanta, who, they, again, not going to score a ton of points, I think there's some value in playing the backup quarterback after the line moves. Minnesota under uh, the last five games are not scoring a bunch and actually under eight of their last nine. So finding teams that are going to get to stay in the 20s is not the worst idea if you're trying to play backup quarterbacks. And yeah, Teddy, jump in there. I kind of like when you guys have, you know, different sides of, of the same game because it gives everybody an idea of different angles of how you guys approach it. One will be right, one will be wrong. We get right? <laughs> yeah, you're allowed to be wrong about this but opinion, Jack. <laughs> well, there we go. Go. Backup quarterback tutorial. There's three basic concepts. First, what's the difference between the starter and the backup? Many times you have a backup that's every bit as good as a starter. In Minnesota, there's an enormous difference between Cousins and whoever they start at QB this week. Looks like Jared Hall, the rookie out of BYU. So, yeah, I'm not sold uh, on Minnesota being good. So the difference between the starter and the backup is the number one thing to pay attention to. But you also want to pay attention, can the team run the football, take the pressure off the backup quarterback? Is it a good defense that can get stops and keep it a low-scoring affair for the backup quarterbacks? If you can run and play defense, you can win games with a backup QB. I know you guys wanted to talk about the NFL trade deadline as well. Teddy, you had a couple of winners that you think uh, <laughs> came away with some nice hauls. Well, real simple. If you, if, you, if you picked up players, even on a rental, it's a locker room enhancing move. And the contenders, Philly, San Fran, Buffalo all did that. Seattle, a nice win now move for Leonard Williams. Washington, not so much. Chicago seems to have no idea what they're doing. And Minnesota picking up Josh Dobbs, one and seven as a starter in Arizona. Shows that you care, though. Anytime you're picking up players at the deadline, that whole tanking thing that's become real popular, we now know that's probably not happening if you're a team picking up players before the deadline. All right, you two, go do some push-ups or whatever you do to get ready for this next segment because we have our player prop showdown. Today, they're going to battle over a running back. Find out who next. With 130 receiving yards in week eight, Philadelphia's A.J. Brown broke the league record for most consecutive games with at least 125 yards receiving. Who did he surpass? The answer after the break. You're watching Beat the Odds, sponsored by Superbook Westgate Las Vegas. Welcome back. Before the break, we asked you, before Phillies A.J. Brown, who previously held the record for most consecutive games with at least 125 receiving yards? The answer, Megatron, who did it in five straight games in 2012, and Pat Studstill, who also did five straight times in Detroit, but back in 1966. All right, the trade deadline has passed, and now what you see is what you get. Movement happening all the way down to the wire, making it clear which franchises are striving to win it all. So let's take a look at the winners of the deadline, shall we? Well, wouldn't you know, 
San Francisco is at the top of the list. The gold rush stacking up that already loaded defensive front with the addition of Chase Young from Washington. Keeping it in the NFC, Minnesota making the most out of their unfortunate Achilles situation, acquiring Josh Dobbs from Arizona. As Kyler Murray is expected to make his return soon, Dobbs isn't exactly the Messiah, but he's demonstrated from his time in AZ that he can learn offensive systems quickly, and that's what they need in mini. And then you got Pete Carroll bolstering his defense to keep Seattle in the mix. They had already locked in Frank Clark to add explosiveness off the edge, but then they make a steel wall out of that D-line, snagging Leonard Williams from the G-men. And of course, the biggest winners, the Las Vegas fan base, as they have been calling for Josh McDaniel's head for the last year, Mark Davis finally answering that call. Now on to the losers, Washington. This is a team that has voiced how tired they are of losing, yet their owner just got rid of their two pass rushers in Chase Young and Montez Sweat. They say defense wins championships, but now there's no defense in the district, so we'll see how that goes. And we can't talk losers without talking Denver. Randy Gregory was supposed to be a difference maker for the defense, which is why he was set to receive $70 million over the course of five years. But nope, Gregory is headed to San Fran. Denver is one of those teams that should have sold, sold, sold at the deadline considering they're riddled with bad contracts and don't have many draft picks due to the Russell Wilson and Sean Payton trades. But I think what's shocked me the most, Tennessee hanging on to both D-Hop and Derrick Henry. But maybe Will Levis entering the group chat gave this team the juice they needed to get back on track. Only time will tell if these moves or lack thereof will pay off. All right, thanks for I sure these guys haven't seen a gym since uh, Neil Armstrong landed on the moon, but no matter, it's Teddy against Jack in our player prop showdown. Today, the boys will debate New Orleans running back Alvin Kamara, who wants to go first. I'll go first, and you're not wrong about that. I mean, I couldn't find the gym with both hands and a, and a direction. Um, yeah, here's the thing. If you're Chicago, like everybody that plays New Orleans, you have one thing other than don't forget your mouthpiece, and that's stop Alvin Kamara. You know, nobody's afraid of Derek Carr dropping back and throwing down the field, and so stopping the running game will be all that they care about in this game. Last week, New Orleans had 32 points. Uh, uh, Kamara, I think he had 58 yards or something, right about this number. I don't think they're going to get that many points. And you also have Taysom Hill. Hill is one of those guys he is flying over these yardage totals and he's becoming a real safety net for what New Orleans is doing offensively with their lack of productivity of the other position so I have to go under with Kamara in what everybody thinks might be over look for somewhere in the 30s rushing wise mm, 56 and a half rushing yards Jack that's not much and it's rushing not rushing and receiving why because New Orleans is going to have the lead in this ball game what do you do when you have the lead you run the football. This Chicago offense is not likely to work against New Orleans elite defense, especially with that defense off a couple of subpar games. So I don't think Chicago is going to have the ball for very long, which means New Orleans is going to have lots of time of possession. And Kamara's getting carries. He's had 17 or more each of the last four games. And he's gone over this total three of the last four against some better defenses than this Jacksonville, Houston, New England. This is a step down in class in a game that I expect him to get lots of carries. Alvin Kamara over his rushing. Shame on you for making us watch this game, by the way. <laughs> hey, by the way, uh, Teddy, when it comes to the player prop showdown, is 7-1. However, when Carolina beat Houston last week, Jack won his best bet again. He's 7-1 in best bets. All right. He's hotter than a honeymoon hotel, everybody. See uh, who Jack and Teddy both like this week coming up next. With four touchdown passes in his pro debut, Tennessee quarterback Will Levis became just the third player ever to throw four touchdown passes in his first career start. Who are the other two? The answer after the break. Welcome back. Before the break, we asked you, other than Will Levis, who are the other two quarterbacks to throw four touchdown passes in their first career start? The answer, Marcus Mariota, who also did it with Tennessee back in 2015, and Hall of Famer Fran Tarkenton, who did it for Minnesota all the way back in 1961. I think Levis's right bicep was bigger than Fran Tarkenton's entire body, <laughs> who, by the way, when he retired, he owned every major passing record in pro football. A lot of people may not remember that, but mm -hmm. he was a really great player back in his day. I don't remember that, but that's okay. Speaking of winning big, that's exactly what these two have been doing all season. It's best bet time. Teddy, get it rolling. Let's talk about Seattle, plus the points 
in Baltimore, plus six as we record. And what's the theme here? Playoff teams or playoff caliber teams catching points. And in this case, more than a field goal. Seattle's been great in these early start Eastern time games. They weren't when Pete Carroll got there. When Carroll arrived, he said, we need to change this. They fly in a day early, an extra day early, and it's made a big difference. They won 16 of the last 20 early start Eastern time games in straight up fashion. And of course, they haven't been losing by margin. They, they got bombed week one. Since then, zero losses by more than four points. Baltimore, yeah, they're fat and happy. They've won three straight. I don't expect them to win this one by margin. Take the points with Seattle. All right, Jack, stay hot. Yeah, later in the year, I want to do a tutorial on how to make the perfect ham sandwich, by the way. Okay. You That's would be my guy to know. That's my wheelhouse. Him. All right. In the meantime, let's get another win, though. <laughs> Under the total in the Buffalo Cincy game. You know, uh, this is a perception versus reality. We have big, high-profile, high uh, high-name quarterbacks that you would think would produce a lot, but both of these teams, conservative by nature from game plans, uh, both coached by uh, coaches that want to keep their players, especially the skill players, out of bad situations. Um, also, Baltimore going under on a regular basis. Nine of their last 11 on the road have gone under, under the total on the uh, Buffalo Cincy game. Why didn't you go back to Germany? For those who maybe didn't watch last season, you went to the Germany game. Were you kicked out of the country? I, I or? did. I ate too much uh, schnitzel, and they said, don't come back. <laughs> I, I can't remember with leader holes in yeah. Jack. I, Too much schnitzel, but I'll be back next year. They'll replenish, I'll go back and reload. So <laughs> the early games are always a good thing, even when we're falling back. Especially here on the West Coast, 6.30 in the morning. We got football on here. Time to roll. That's, right. That's when you're staying up all night, right? You're not going to bed. Wake up and win. There's nothing better than that. Perfect way to end it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks everybody. Thanks to you guys. Thanks to Brandon Marshall as well. Uh, good luck this weekend and enjoy all the football. We'll see you next week for more Beat the Odds.